Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's so easy to say there's the person who looks like that, that's what they're into. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Eva O, also known as Mistress Eva. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a professional dominatrix. Privately, I am a dom-leaning switch, and there's a lot more other things that we can go into within the interview. You Will Please Me is my social media handle, but I actually crafted it a few years ago when I decided to start my online slave training program. And I was looking for an online medium to supplement my offline uh, practice. And what kind of came to me was why would people want to buy into this? Why would people be drawn to it? And yeah, I kind of looked towards the end goal and you will please me emerged and it now belongs to me everywhere until they kick me off. <laughs> I use the term international dominatrix because I don't really have a fixed place where I practice and I travel a lot. So in a way, it's uh, easier for me to market and also just to communicate the fact that I am everywhere. So be on the lookout for me <laughs> near you. <laughs> So I would say that if you are interested to become a dominatrix, to maybe identify what it is about the role that's interesting for you, if it's more the archetype and less the work, that maybe it's more about um, understanding that you would like to develop a sense of dominance or to get your fingers into what that might feel like because this is a uh, business <laughs> and it's really mostly about how you're going to brand yourself, how you're going to manage your clients, how you're going to retain them and how you're going to manage yourself so that your mind and your emotions don't get burned out because when you are interacting on such an intimate level, on such a repetitive basis with all of these different personalities it can get exhausting so are you actually in it for the professional side are you in it because you're looking to explore an aspect of you how much do those things go together so i think motivations and understanding them is very important and if you do want to take the professional route i would say that it would be good to expose yourself to a lot of different people who are doing the role to see the range that's possible and the ways of working that are possible and maybe even to approach some people who are offering whether it's courses, a talk, a mentorship and uh, respectfully approaching them according to how they would like and asking them questions, asking if they do an apprenticeship. I think surrounding yourself with people who are invested in the craft for a while is the best way to go about things and then things like upskilling in certain ways that you personally enjoy because you're going to be doing a lot of it <laughs> yeah and so i would say that maybe that those are some places to start you off i would say that the way that you present yourself can draw in a certain kind of person as opposed to uh, me noticing personality types and the things that they're drawn to. I can tell you when I first started in a dungeon over 10 years ago now, uh, the most common things that would come across my plate were people who were interested in First and foremost, if they have a prostate, <laughs> things in their butt. Uh, then probably feet was always uh, very much high up there, as well as golden showers. Those would probably be the main things that people across the board were very much drawn towards. I feel like people have become a little bit more interested in rope lately. I don't know whether that's because things 
are more popularized in English in the English speaking world now when it comes to rope as opposed to heavy bondage which is maybe more popular 10 years ago even though it's still a personal favorite of mine when it comes to heavy uh, leather and um, things like this Hmm. So again, when I started in the dungeon, it was all sorts of people, whoever were able to get to the door. <laughs> it was everybody from legal age to been legal for a very long time. <laughs> so, and um, all sorts of bodies, all sorts of minds. Uh, however, because over time I've changed my pricing structure because <laughs> uh, when it comes to distribution of wealth, everything is unfair and not equal. It has definitely changed the demographic that comes to me uh, because now my rate is, I think it's 10, 10 times what I had <laughs> charged when I first started. So yeah, that means that it's, uh, Sadly, a lot of older white men. <laughs> I call it redistribution of wealth. <laughs> when it comes to personal play, I think I've, I've noticed an uptick in interest in rope. When it comes to professional play, I haven't seen so much of a shift, really. Um, I think it really depends on how you market yourself because there's a lot of people who will get maybe people who are very interested in mommy play because you have a lot of photos where you very much look like a mommy. <laughs> you may have a lot of different outfits and you get people who are gravitating towards the role play and the variations that that can be. You can have the heavy latex fetishes who are going to walk towards me and my latex problem. <laughs> so, so it can really be all sorts and I think you would have to see a hell of a lot of people to really understand what, what might be popularized. Or you could also have a, have a look at the Pornhub statistics. <laughs> yeah. I think what I enjoy the most about my job from the first session until now is that I get to play, that I get to laugh <laughs> and really enjoy myself and to twist through my mind and the minds of others on such a consistent basis that I can become fairly good at achieving that joy for myself. I think that's probably my most favorite part of the job and then it's pretty amazing to get paid for that also. <laughs> to fuel a life through fun um, and of course it's not necessarily always joyful and fun it's work but I think over time I've also learned how to structure it so I don't work too much where it becomes a drag yeah that's been important too I have had different contracts over the years and they have reflected where I've been at. Uh, they've been <laughs> 20 long page with, uh, you know, appendices and uh, etc. And they have worked its way down to one sheet where I just talk about uh, spiritual, emotional and mental aspects and um, how we kind of want to meet together. So uh, it, it's really dependent upon uh, it will look very different depending on who the people are who are involved. So I would say that if you are already partnered in a group, however, it's really about having a conversation as to what that could look like for you. There are lots of options that are out there also, examples, and I would always suggest a trial period. <laughs> I think that it would be fun to choose the roles that we wish to explore and explore them. <laughs> so I don't see the limitation personally. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I get asked this a lot by people who are not into kink. <laughs> and uh, over t at the beginning, I was quite frustrated um, because it seemed like such a strange question. I don't feel like what I get up to is weird. Uh, <laughs> but over time, because based upon the people who are asking me this, I have crafted a little answer that I'm satisfied with. And the answer is that I think BDSM has given me so many beautiful tools in order to connect with others and to understand myself for the better. And what I find weird is that outside of this realm, it's so common that those things are not present. And that is my answer. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> it may not be the last question after I tell you, <laughs> but uh, this weekend I shot my first porn uh, for Erica Lust actually, shot um, by and written by Ellen Pearson and Kitty Drake and they have been interviewing me for two years to write this script. It's a short film and we, yeah, it's about death, grief and sex, some of my favourite things to think about and to feel into. Yeah. <laughs>